Hi students, this is the second lecture. We are skipping chapter two um, for a couple reasons. It, one, it, it really goes over the history of management and understanding managers and their role. It's an interesting read, so if you're interested in learning about the history, go ahead and read that chapter yourself. But with the limited number of weeks that we have together and the projects that we need to get through, um, it, it became important for me to cut out a couple chapters, um, so I decided chapter 3 was a little more important than chapter 2. So chapter 3 is going to go over really um, what managers have to be thinking about in order to be successful managers. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get into that. This week is a little bit lighter than the other weeks, and the reason why is because your um, assignments are going to start getting a little bit more demanding. You're going to have a communication plan coming up soon. I will walk you through that, don't worry. Um, so really you just have the quiz and uh, the discussion post this week, so make sure you get those things done. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So the learning outcomes for this chapter, which you can find at the beginning of the chapter, is to discuss how changing environments affect organizations, describe the four components of the general environment, explain the five components of the specific environment, and these two really go together. And you'll see that later on, or if you've already read the chapter, then you'll see that as you read. Um, describe the process that companies use to make sense of their changing environments and explain how organizational cultures are created and how they can help companies be successful. The organizational culture piece, there's another chapter that goes into this more, um, and it also kind of ties into diversity as well. They're a little bit different because organizational culture is more about how you get people to embrace the company culture, whereas diversity is really about expanding that culture. So I'll tie that back in when we get into that later in the semester. Just keep that in your mind. Okay, so let's start with the first one. Discuss how changing environments affect organizations. So um, Usually for the PowerPoint, I'm just pulling out the important terminology that you're going to see while you're reading. I recommend taking note of these sorts of things. This is the language I'm looking for you to use when you do your responses or assignments. Um, I want to see that you're learning the language, the management language. So pay attention to these. Um, you have environmental change, stable environments, dynamic environments. Those are, you know, pretty self-explanatory. The punctuated equilibrium theory is not something we're going to dive super heavy into. That's something, um, if you're interested in learning more about, just let me know. This is something that if you're planning to go on to get your bachelor's degree, you might talk about this more. Um, but for your associates and for the purpose of this class, it's not super important to know. So don't stress if you don't quite grasp it. It's kind of a complex theory, um, and we're just not going to spend time on it. We, we unfortunately don't have a whole lot of time to, to spend. Uh, discuss how a changing environments affect organizations. So this is just a continuation. Um, again, these are this is really just building up your vocabulary. So um, the book is going to do a lot more than the lecture is at, at this point of the presentation. So make sure you're reading the book. It gives you an example of the dairy industry, uh, which helps you understand what they're trying to say. And then um, just take note of these definitions. Okay, discuss how changing environments affect organizations, continuation part three. So uncertainty, this one is more important, and the reason why is because as managers, when you're working for an organization, especially as an upper or middle manager, you're going to have to constantly be trying to predict what trends are affecting your organization, what environmental changes there are that can either boost your business or harm your business and then you have to be proactive in how you're going to take advantage of that situation or prepare for um, a harmful situation. So this one is really important to understand and this is the what I think is the concept of this chapter, the main point of this chapter is that as a manager you have to be thinking of your organization as a whole which includes, as we'll see later on I think in the next slide or so, it includes thinking about what happens outside of your organization because everything is tied together. So yeah, it was the next slide. Um, so this includes the general environment. Now I've circled what the four are of the general environment. You have economy, political legal trends, technology, sociocultural trends, right? So think about these differently. 
First, how does the economy affect your organization? When are we in a strong economy? When is the economy tanked? Those sorts of things are going to affect, you know, how many customers you have, what kind of products you're producing, what kind of, you know, things you can give to your employees in terms of health benefits or pay, right? Economy is really going to affect the budget of your organization. So as a manager, you have to be on top of economic trends. Then you have political legal trends. These are sort of things that affect how you manage your business. For example, um, diversity laws or livable wage laws, which is one that's really popular right now as a lot of states are starting to pass or are thinking about passing laws that require organizations to pay employees a certain amount of pay to start off with, even as entry-level employees. And I, and I think some states it's $15 an hour. So that's going to affect your organization, right? If that law passes, are you prepared to be able to raise all of your employees' wages? Things like that. Then technology, of course, especially if you're in the tech industry, but even if you're not, how can you leverage new technology that's coming out? If you're in the medical industry, what does that mean for your patients? If you're, you know, in the printing industry, what new technology can you use for your products? And then, of course, sociocultural trends, which is really understanding society. What are they interested in? What do your consumers want? How is society changing? And how can your organization reflect and embrace that to survive? So all of those sorts of things are the general environment because it encompasses the industry as a whole. It affects all organizations, not just specifically yours, but it is something that as a manager, again, you would have to track. So then that leads us to the specific environment. Now these are the things that affect your your company so or your industry, the unique industry that you're in. So if we use, uh, you know, let's think medical for example, right? So you have all these different things. So think that if your organization is a hospital, okay, and then you also have to think about your competitors who are also hospitals, you have different the, these five different factors that are going to affect how you manage your hospital. So one is your customers, right? You always have to be constantly thinking about your patients because that's the purpose of the hospital. Your competition, what new hospitals are coming in, what hospitals are doing poor, how can you pull in your customers, how close are you um, to your competition, Advocacy groups, who is pushing for what new policies? Um, a big one right now is to reduce the, the use of opioids for pain management, right? So there's a lot of advocacy groups that are urging or trying to change policies so that organ hospitals can't e give out opi opioids as easily for pain management because it causes addiction. Um, and then, of course, industry regulation. Hospitals are highly regulated. As a manager, you would have to know what all of those regulations are and how your company is upholding those. And then, of course, your suppliers. Where are you getting your medicine? Where are you getting your training for your staff? Where are you getting the um, tools and machines that you need for your hospital? All those sorts of things. So all of those are your specific in environment. And this is very important. These last two slides are very important to know um, and something that I want you to continue thinking about throughout the rest of the semester as you do your assignments, as you do your responses in the discussion board. I want you to be using these language, especially in these two slides, because when you become a manager or you continue on this route, these are the most important for you. Okay, so describe the process companies use to make sense of their changing environments. So now that we know what we're looking for as a manager and we're trying to pay attention to things like economy, so how do we, you know, how do we make sense of that? So there's environmental scanning, interpreting environmental factors, and acting on threats and opportunities. So again, this is um, what I what I talked about in the last slide. I was walking you these walking throughs, right? Like you have to pay attention to your environment around you. You have to understand when the economy is tanking, when it's doing well, stuff like that. 
and then of course interpreting what does it mean for your organization and then acting on those threats and opportunities is coming up with a plan like I said you, you have to be proactive you either have to jump on it when you know it's going to be good for your company or you have to be prepared and proactive about having a plan if something bad is going to happen that's going to affect your business or you, you may go under and this is why at the end of the semester instead of doing a final I have you guys doing a SWOT analysis instead and if you haven't heard of a SWOT analysis don't panic it's something I'm gonna walk you through in de great detail to make sure you're comfortable with this assignment but basically it's these three things right you'll be scan you'll be picking a business that you want to pretend to be a manager for or, or unless you're already a manager for them that's great um, but you're gonna scan the environment you're gonna interpret those factors and then you're gonna come up with um, a plan of action or a proactive plan in order to handle the threat and again I'll walk you through this closer to the end of the semester. All right, explain how organizational cultures are created and how they can help companies become successful. So this is uh, really important for successful organizations is having a culture that your employees feel like they're a part of because it will draw in more consumers because your staff are happier, so they're talking about their work more. Um, and it's also going to retain your employees longer because they feel like they're part of something bigger than themselves. So this is one of the things I see a lot of companies doing wrong is they don't have a strong culture or they have kind of a toxic culture where people don't feel safe or fulfilled or happy. So how can they can become successful through this is a, creating and maintaining organizational cultures, and you can do this by sharing stories of successful employees or stories of um, the company itself. So I'm going to use Bureau of Reclamation as an example because that's where I currently work, um, and a lot of times we have um, stories highlighting some of our employees. We just wrote one about our, one of our illustrators who is uh, super well known in the art industry here in Boise, Idaho, and he volunteers a lot of his time to help um, high school students become more active in the art industry as well and to encourage them to go to college. So we talk about how he embraces our core values because he is, you know, respecting people and helping the community. So we tie his personal life into our organization culture or core values, and it makes people feel like their whole life is part of this organization. Um, and he's been with Bureau of Reclamation now for I think about 10 or 15 years. Um, so that's one example. You can also have ceremonies, right? So things like employee of the month or employee of the year, you know, having um, break times where you all enjoy coffee together, things like that. Um, successful organizational cultures are also adaptable. They have a lot of employee involvement and a clear mission with consistency. So employee involvement is so important. You have to allow your employees to participate in the creation of the culture because they're more likely to embrace it. Um, having a clear mission is also absolutely vital and where a lot of people fail. Um, for example, a reclamation has a clear mission, right? We serve water in the West, but our internal mission, which is what builds our culture, is a, these core values, respect for people, safety, clear and effective communication, and we have them on little badges, so we all the staff carries it with them everywhere, and we all have it in our cubicles, so every employee is aware of the core values. And every article we write or um, every project that we do, every time we have a meeting, we go over the core values so it's consistent as well, which creates culture, right? Because it becomes part of everything you're doing. And then changing organizational culture. So let's say you have a culture um, that you don't like. And I'll, I'll use an example again from Reclamation. Our safety culture, we're going through a big change right now um, because there's a lot of accidents when managing electricity or hydropower or, you know, dams. There's a, a lot of times where engineers can get hurt. And so we're trying to change our culture to where we're constantly thinking about safety first. Um, so how do we do that? Well, we have to have surface or scene material to remind people about safety. So we launched a huge poster project where 
all of the offices throughout our region, which includes four states, um, has the same poster that talks about safety. We also do it on our little news blurb that's in all the offices as well. Um, our director travels to each place and talks about safety, which can also be an expressed, which is heard. So we talk about safety in everything that we do. Um, and then, of course, eventually, after seeing it so much and hearing about safety so much, it's going to become unconscious and move to the believed level. So people will constantly be thinking about safety first, which is what we want. So that's how organizational cultures are created and how they can help companies become successful. If you have a strong culture where employees feel like they're valued and they're part of something bigger and that their work is a part of their life, um, you're going to retain them a lot longer and you're going to have happier employees, which makes happier consumers. All right, so um, that's the end of this lecture. It was a little bit shorter. It's a shorter chapter. Again, just make sure you're comfortable with the terminology. If you need to talk to me more about it, just shoot me an email. We can set up a time to meet over Skype or phone or in person if you're located in Boise or Nampa. Um, other than that, just go ahead and make sure that you get the quiz done. You can use your notes. You can use your book. Um, it's not, you know, designed to trick you. It's I, I want to see you thinking about the terminology. And because of that, they are there's just three questions. It's 10 points, so it's low impact. Don't panic. Um, but it is designed um, as essay questions that way you can use, you can practice using this terminology. Um, and then, of course, you have the discussion post, which will give you another opportunity as well. All right, you guys have a great day, a great week, and keep in touch, and you've got this.